Can you see me? Can you see me now? Hey, guys, how are you guys? Was that crazy? Did it feel fuzzy? Was that neat? Ryan's doing a good job behind our camera for us. This month we're talking about focus. Okay, and let me just tell you real quick. This is our very last week where we're going to do Blasting Zone 2.0. You guys have been incredible in hanging out with us these past, I don't know, it feels like three months. <laughs> um, you guys have done such a good job hanging out with us and staying with us. Um, but next week, we're gonna open up our, our large group at nine o'clock. Is that really exciting? Can I get a thumbs up if you're excited about that? Yeah? Are you, ex oh, just a couple. <laughs> so we're gonna see you guys, hopefully at nine o'clock, starting next week, okay? Don't forget about Oscar, and don't forget that there's the parent queue um, that you guys, if your parents have downloaded that, you have the parent queue that you can use to kind of revisit the things that we talk about today. Um, we cannot wait to see you. I'm gonna, we, we have a little bit different um, faces that you're gonna see today. Today, um, Miss Jess is helping us out today, um, and I'm doing the part of Yaya, so pretend like I'm Yaya right now, okay? <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna bring on Miss Jess. She's gonna get us started. We have a little game that we're gonna play, okay? Can't wait to see you guys. Hello everyone. Wow, you are all so gigantic. I love binoculars. You can use them to see things up close that are used that are actually far away. For example, I might see a tiny little speck of mountainside in the distance. But if I take a closer look with these I can see that the speck is actually a grizzly bear. <laughs> Pretty cool. There are a lot of things that we can use to help us see something better. Binoculars, microscopes, or even telescopes that let us <clears throat> look at the night sky. All of these things help us focus. They help us take a closer look. This month, we're putting our focus on something really important, but it's actually something you can't see. I'm talking about faith. Oh, it's my head in the way. Here. Ooh. Faith. <laughs> Trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. How can you do that? How can you trust in something you can't see? Well, it's simpler than you might think, and we can start by taking a closer look. To kick things off today, I've got a fun game that I like to call microscope, telescope, or eyes. Microscope. Telescope eyes. Woo woo! I'm not good. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna we'll skip that. Here's how we play. We'll put a blurry vision up on the screen. We will then discuss and choose which item would you see the the object on the screen. <clears throat> so would would you use a telescope, a microscope? Or just eyes? Hmm, let's think of ways that maybe you guys can help us. Let's see. Point to your eyes. Where's your eyes? If you want us to use our eyes, you point to your eyes. Jackson, point to your eyes. <laughs> Jackson, <laughs> where's your okay. eyeballs? Okay, I let's see. see. Who can show me what you want to use for if we need a telescope to see what we want? What do you think? How can we do a telescope? Oh, I like that one. Good. Do, do, do. Okay. How about a microscope? I don't know. I don't know. Do, do, do. Right. Well, my hair's in the way. But, okay. Huh? Your boys are pointing into their nose. Oh, a microscope. 
you know, the thing that you have slides, you know what I'm talking about? Where you look at like bacteria and stuff. Okay, sorry. I want you guys to participate and that's how yeah. we're gonna do it, okay? Yeah. That's my question. Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, ready? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna have images back here. Yeah. Right. And I'm gonna try to meet him. <laughs> do you see the face I got? All right, okay. Um, I'm gonna guess microscope. Maybe it's an asteroid, though. I don't know. I think it's like a cell, you know, a human cell or a bacteria. Ooh. Let's see. Is it a microscope? Yes! <laughs> it's an amoeba! <laughs> That's a big word. <laughs> and we both got it right. You're right. Point me, point you. Okay. Ready for the next one, guys? Did you guys guess microscope? Oh, they didn't. They were watching. Okay. You guys got to guess with us this time, okay? Oh. oh, I got this one. What do you think? Wait, let me see what you guys got. What do you think? What do you think this is? Can you see oh, the screen? Kylie has one. Looks oh, like Lance and it. Caleb have it. Oh, I think everybody's in agreement. Oh, everyone got it. it. I think it's some kind of planet. I think it's Saturn. I said the word. Right? <laughs> yeah. It is. We use our telescope for that. All right. That helps us focus on that, right? right? Okay, let's see what else we got. I have no idea how many of these we have. Oh. I think those are blood cells. I'm going with microscope. Um, I'm going with microscope. On this one. Come on, Jack. <laughs> I just want to be like I feel like it's probably something in your body too. I feel like, but I don't know. Maybe whoever gets this one right or wrong is who's gonna be in lead. Or I'll do something different. I'll say ice because maybe it's see. like a crazy canyon or something cool. I don't know. I hope not. Yes. Platelets. I take lead. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, I think it's some sort of food. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I think it's an egg. I think it's, everyone says eyes. You guys say eyes? All right. Okay. I think they all say eyes. Pancakes! Yes! I wish I had some pancakes. You too. <laughs> uh, oh, I think I know this one. I think I know this one. What do we say? Oh, yeah, what do you guys say? <laughs> Come on. Supposed to be for them. All right, someone says oh, telescope. We got some telescopes. Oh, got lots of telescopes. All right, guys. It's like the Mark Horse boys are just swinging their legs. I say eyes. Oh! Yes! Yes! I thought it was a planet again. He is stomping me. Let's go. Come on, guys. Although I kind of thought it was like the sun, so I don't think you would want to look into the sun. Well, not a good idea. Okay, is there more? Nope, nope that's He definitely won. I took the win. By a lot. <laughs> Thank you. No, we're good. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Got my handy dandy binoculars. You know what? Okay, so in our in our household, we love comedy. And when Jess said something about a grizzly bear, I was thinking of this comedy special that I just heard, and the guy said, in in front of us was a grizzly bear, which is way bigger than a gummy bear. <laughs> And I thought it was really funny. It tied into what she was saying. I'm totally off what I'm supposed to be doing here. Okay, so right now we're talking about focusing, right? So I'm really happy to talk to you about this today because when we're talking about focus, we're gonna focus on our faith. Faith is so super important. Um, faith changes the way that we live our lives. It changes the way we think about ourselves. It changes the way we think about God and the way that we treat others, right? If I look at my binoculars, our faith is sort of like binoculars that we can look through to see everything in our life. It helps us to make sense of the things that we know. Um, it helps us to make sense of, of things and know what to do when things get really hard. Uh, our faith reminds us that we can trust God no matter what. Okay, that is one of our basic truth saying oh that's not up yet sorry this is what we're going to do in a little bit <laughs> i didn't know if that was up or not um when we say that did you guys recognize that we say that every week that we can trust god no matter what um so i want you guys to listen to the words that we have out of um, the 11th 
book of, or the 11th chapter of Hebrews. And Hebrews is a book in the New Testament. Um, I have it here. I don't have my Bible with, oh, Jess is coming to the rescue. She's bringing me the Bible. So this is in one of yours, one of your books. If you guys have the same one, um, I am on page um, 1216 and 1217, okay? If you guys have this Bible too. And I want you guys, we also have it up here, okay? I'm going to read it um, from what I have because I'm going to read a little bit beyond this. But if you guys can see this, go ahead and read it with me. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago were praised for. Um, you see, faith is about believing in things that you can't see because of what you can see. We can't see God, but we can, see, we can read about people that came before us to follow God. These were men and women who faced tough times, just like you and I do. People who were just hurting and scared and sometimes overwhelmed, but they chose to follow God. They chose to trust his promises that he would one day send a rescuer. And that rescuer was Jesus. Um, yeah. I'm making sure that I read all of that, yes. Um, okay, so let's talk about, as we go back, as we go back in our Bible stories, let's talk about people that had crazy unbelievable faith. And I know that you guys know all these guys because we've talked about them. We spent like a whole month on each of these people, okay? The first one, um, and I don't know if you guys can type in your answers. The first one was a, a man, and he had a wife, and they were old. They didn't have any kids. But God told him he was going to be the father of many. Do you know who this was? Do you know who it was? Can you tell? Oh, wait, look, we have a fuzzy picture. Will this help? Can you see this fuzzy one? Okay, if you guys guessed it was Abraham, it absolutely was Abraham. There he is, there he's in focus. God asked Abraham to leave his country, to leave his people, to leave his family, and to go into the land that God would show him. God promised him that all the nations of the earth would be blessed because of him. You see, God knew that he was going to send his rescuer, Jesus, through Abraham's family. It would be a long time after Abraham, but did he hold true to his promise? Did God bless every nation of the world through Abraham? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Abraham had God's promise, but he couldn't see the way that God's promise would come true. There's no way that he was going to see that hundreds of years later the Savior of the world was going to come through his bloodline, right? But still, Abraham had faith, and he trusted God. Okay, so we see Mr. Abraham here. He left his home, his people, he followed God's call, and eventually he had a son named Isaac and a grandson named Jacob and his great-grandson, Joseph. And all of those guys, we've looked at all of those guys, they all put their faith in God. And just like Abraham, they believed that God would keep his promise. Does God keep his promises? Give me a thumbs up if you think, yeah, absolutely, or meh. Oh, yeah, God keeps his promises. He absolutely does. Okay, here's two more guys that you guys know a lot about. The first one, oh, can you tell who this is just by looking at this picture? Can you? This is a great example. Um, another great example is Moses, like Abraham. Moses was called by God to do something extraordinary, something that he didn't feel like he was ready to do at all. And in the moment, he couldn't really see how it would all work out. But just like Abraham, Moses chose to put his faith in God. Okay, now let's look at, let's look at Moses again. Oh, big moment right here, right? Do you guys know what he's doing there? He's parting the sea, yeah. Moses was an Israelite, one of God's people, uh, but he had been raised in a different place from the Israelites. Do you guys remember where he was raised? 
Do you remember that he was raised in Pharaoh's palace? Pharaoh was the leader of Egypt, and he had forced the Israelite peoples, the Israelite people, to work as slaves for him. So right now, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, but Moses wasn't, because Pharaoh's daughter was raising Moses as her son. So he was raised in Pharaoh's palace. Um, one day, God, God called Moses from a burning bush and told Moses to lead his people out of slavery. Moses wasn't sure that he was the man for the job, but in the end, he chose to stand up for his people and stand up against Pharaoh, who was sort of like his adopted dad. Um, sure enough, God used Moses to lead his people to freedom. And that's not all. When you read the book of Hebrews, you discover a huge list of people who followed God um, by having faith. This list goes on so very long in the book of Hebrews that the writer eventually just stops naming them. Um, one name that we cannot forget um, is Israel's greatest king. We're going to see the blurry picture first. I didn't imagine him as a redhead. I didn't. <laughs> um, so do you guys remember who Israel's greatest king was? God called him a man after his own heart. Do you guys remember that? David. King David. David knew that God had chosen him to be the king of God's people, but years passed, years after God had already told him that he was going to be the king, and it hadn't happened. And to make it worse, the king that was there right now was Saul, and he wanted to kill David. Like, really, this is not looking like God's really going to follow through here. David spent years of his life um, on the run from King Saul, and that must have been really super hard. But David put his faith in God. Let's focus on God again. Have faith. There he is. Look at him playing his harp. How jolly is he? Even though David couldn't totally see how things were going to work out, he chose to trust God. He had faith that God would keep his promise, and eventually God did. Of course he did. He does. Um, and David became a great king. None of these people from the Old Testament could see with their eyes how God was going to save his people. Instead, they chose to trust. They chose to trust God, and then they believed that he would come through on those promises. They believed that God had a greater plan. They chose to have faith. Remember, faith is what's helping us focus. So listen to how the writer of Hebrews puts this. Um, this is Hebrews 11, 39 to 40. Um, all these people were praised because they had faith, but none of them have received what God had promised. That's because God had planned something better for us. So these were the people in the Old Testament believing that God was going to come through on this promise. They never got to meet the Savior, but they still had faith that this was what God had planned for them to be part of this big story. That's crazy good. Um, so God had something better planned for them. He had better plans for all of us, for us even today. His big story had been taking shape all the way back from creation, all the way back to Adam and Eve. Um, and God did send his rescuer at just the right time. He sent his son, Jesus, to be our savior. Let's focus on Jesus. Whoa, that's so much better. Okay, Jesus showed us what God is really like. He even told us that the most important thing we can do is to love God and love others. Jesus came to earth to show us the way. Okay, I'm going to break from what I'm supposed to say here because we've talked about this a lot in our household. Um, I want you guys to recognize that Jesus showed up to show us that you love first. You love first no matter what another person looks like, no matter how another person acts, if they are able to do all the things that you're able to do, if they're not able to do all the things that you do. Jesus came to say, 
uh uh none of that matters. None of the things that divide us matter. What matters is we are all made in God's image. If you see another person, that person is made in God's image just like you. And God sent Jesus to show us how to love. So if you guys take one thing away from this, of course I want you to focus on your faith, but I really want you to recognize that when Jesus was, was quizzed and when he was asked, hey, what's the greatest law to follow? Jesus said, love the Lord your God. And the second commandment is like that, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. I don't want you guys to forget that. That is something that you need to live by every day of your life for the rest of your life. Okay, now I'm going to get back to my story. <laughs> when Jesus was killed, his friends and followers thought that the story was over. Do you guys think that the story was over when Jesus died? No way, Jose. Otherwise, we wouldn't still be talking about it 2,000 years later, right? God made everything clear when he raised Jesus back to life. Now we can trust that anyone who believes and follows Jesus has the promise of eternal life. That's what it means to have faith. We can believe and put our faith in Jesus even though we've never seen him with your own eyes. Have you guys ever seen Jesus in real life with your own eyes? I'm sure we've seen paintings of what people think he looks like. We've seen actors portray Jesus, right? But have you ever actually seen him? I haven't. But do you know if he, that he's here? Can I get a nod? Yeah, of course, right? The early followers of Jesus, like Peter and John, showed us what faith looks like. They saw Jesus teach and heal. They saw him after God had raised him back, from, um, back to life. Eventually, Jesus returned to heaven, and they couldn't see him anymore. Uh, but that didn't stop them from believing. They continued to follow Jesus and continued to live by faith. Okay, we're going to look at the screen. Hey! Who do you think this is? Is this Peter and John? I think so. You know, I have no idea what they actually look like, but sure. <laughs> um, early Christians like these guys, they believed in what they couldn't see. They knew they were part of a big story, even though they couldn't see the ending of where God would make everything right. They chose to believe just like they did. We can do that. We can believe like the people of the Old Testament. We can follow Jesus even when we can't see him. We can choose to have faith. Remember, you can know Jesus even though you've never seen him. Do you guys know Jesus? Raise your hand. Do you know Jesus? I know Jesus. I talk to him all the time. Right? You guys know him even though you can't see him. That's so true. You may not be able to see Jesus with your eyes, but you can see how he loves. You can see how he helps people. You can see, this is a big one, how people can have faith in hard times because they've trusted him first. You know, other people can see Jesus by looking at you. That's a big responsibility. You're totally capable. I see you guys all the time doing things that I feel like would be stuff, things that Jesus does. When other people look at you, you want them to see Jesus, right? Yeah. You can know Jesus even though you've never seen him. Um, so what I want you guys, I want you to fold your hands, bow your heads. We're going to pray together, okay? Dear God, thank you for giving us so many examples of people all throughout history who chose to put their faith in you. They couldn't always see how it would all work out, but they chose to trust you. Thank you for reminding us today that we can trust you. We can trust in your promises, even though we don't see how they're gonna work out. Help us to remember that when it's hard, when we feel frustrated, when we feel afraid, that we can trust you and put our faith in you. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I don't want you to forget that people are looking at you, and I want them to see Jesus. When I look at your sweet faces, I absolutely see Jesus. Do you believe that? 
Do you believe that for yourself? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring Miss Jess back, and she's going to close us up. Guys, I can't wait to see you. Okay? All right. Okay. Sorry. God's story is so big. It's amazing to look back at all, at all of the people who believed in God and put their faith in Him. People like Abraham, Moses, and David. They trusted in what they couldn't see. They believed in God is faithful. They believed that God would keep His promises. They believe that it's always worth to follow His plan. Remember, Faith is being sure of what we don't see. That's why it is says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, which is actually our memory verse of this month. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we don't see, do not see. We can have faith in Jesus even though we can't see him, not only can we read about who Jesus is and what he's done? But we can also look to others who follow Jesus. <clears throat> Two, when you know how he has worked in other people's lives, you can also see how he can work in your life too. The truth is, there will be times in our lives when it feels like we can't see. There will be things we don't understand. There will be times when we aren't sure <coughs> how it will all work out. But through of it all, we can trust Jesus and choose to have faith. The bottom line is, you can know Jesus even though you've never seen him. You might wonder where to start with all of this. Where do you start to put your faith in Jesus? Well, you can talk to someone who does follow and trust in Jesus, like maybe a parent or someone else in your family or a small group leader. You can ask them how they put their faith in Jesus. You can also read the stories of the men and women in the Bible who you can trust in Jesus. When you see and hear how others have put their faith in Jesus, it can help you do the same. Cool. You guys, did you like that story? Oh, I'm not getting excited. <laughs> did you guys like that story today? That we recapped all these people that we've talked about over the course of probably a year? So many people in the Bible, okay? You guys, I know that you guys look all cozy, all cuddled up, some of y'all are lounging on the couch some of you are cuddled under blankets next week i really hope we get to see your sweet faces here okay we miss you we are so crazy about you guys for for hanging out with us during this this hard like remote stuff i know that's not near as fun as like you guys doing the games you guys are awesome though for hanging out with us for sticking with us next week we will be here okay it might look a little different we might do some you know it might be arranged a little bit different, but we'll be here, okay? We're going to be here for first service, just first service, okay? And then we'll give you stuff to bring with you. If you're, if you're staying and going to second service, we'll have that for you to take with you. If you um, are headed home with mom and dad or grandma or whoever, um, you'll have stuff to bring home, okay? All right. Last day of Blasting Zone 2.0. You guys rock. Thanks for hanging out with us. We love you. Bye.